Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Roman with you guys once again, and I am I am bringing you more movie talk for you guys today. I've been really dwelling into the movie category lately, been researching as much as possible, figuring out, listening to AMC Movie Talk, and it's been really wanting me, really getting me to want to talk about my most anticipated, my top five most anticipated movies of 2014, before we get into, you know, the stretch where movies start coming out more often, and... One movie I forgot to add to this list because there's not a lot of talk about it. Only, you know, only a couple people, you know, know a lot about it. And that is X-Men Days of Future Past. I didn't, I'm not going to get around to talking to it because I want to focus more on the other films. Um, but yeah, I forgot to add this to my list and put photos and stuff. But uh, anyways, as you can see on screen is Godzilla. And Godzilla, uh, they released a teaser trailer about a month and a half, maybe even before that. I just, I just saw it recently. And... I liked it. I thought it was a great teaser trailer. It's got a great, great cast. I almost said great Cranston because Brian Cranston is in the movie, an awesome actor, perfect in Breaking Bad, and I'm pretty excited for this movie. You know, they've screwed. Up. They didn't really screw up Godzilla, but it obviously wasn't the best. And now they're bringing us this new Godzilla, which should be great. Um, I'm really excited for it. You only got to see a little glimpse of him uh, in the teaser trailer. A lot of people complained about that. But I'm not really complaining, you know, I want surprises, I want to be surprised by things. You know, one of the things that movie trailers do nowadays is they show you, like, the big surprise. And they can't do that. Like, uh, for example, if I were to be directing Spider-Man 3 and I put together the trailers and everything, uh, would, ha would I have shown the black suit in the trailer? No, because that would have been awesome to be, have people react in the theater to see a black suit all of a sudden for Spider-Man. I, I, I think people would have been blown away by that. So I'm glad they're not revealing too much about the monster. Um, from what I'm seeing, what you're seeing, what you're looking at on screen, uh, this looks more probably what the monster will look like. Uh, it looks pretty cool. It looks really badass. I'm not complaining at all. Uh, I can't be honest with you though if that is the actual monster, but or or if that's actually Godzilla. A lot of people are saying uh, maybe there'll be two Godzillas, like similar to a Pacific Rim type of movie. Uh, Pacific Rim was another great movie I really enjoyed in 2013. But will they do that with this movie? I highly doubt it. This is a Godzilla movie. I think they're going to only, only focus on one monster. The teaser trailer was great. Um, I'm really stoked for this movie. Great cast, like I've said before. They, also, what I really liked about the trailer is them... The army jumping uh, off of the plane, just falling down with the red smoke uh, behind them. And also to add, if you hear background noise uh, besides my voice, um, I'm really sorry for that. I live in a house with a lot of people. So don't complain or post anything in the comments. That'll be rude. All right, moving on to another honorable mention is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I am stoked for this movie. I'm so excited. I love the first Planet of the Apes movie. Caesar is such a great character. Uh, I can't put my finger on it on who uh, CGI's Caesar, but I believe it is Andy Serkis, and I gotta say, I love it. I think he did a phenomenal job. Uh, the one scene in the first Planet of the Apes reboot film was uh, the scene where he's talking to Caesar. I forget the character's name. I haven't seen the movie in so long. He's talking to Caesar, and then Caesar just bursts out with this loud, like, no, and I'm like, so blown away. I got the chills and everything. It's just, it's an awesome character. Uh, I'm really, I hope this series succeed. You know, obviously the ones back from, the, I believe the 60s or 70s did not do very well. They were very, you know, poor films. But now with this reboot and everything, um, they've got a different cast, which, uh, which is fine. You know, it's, I believe it's set, I can't pinpoint exactly how many years after when the outbreak first started, but I believe that uh, it's you know it's like six or seven years right after, and uh, I'm pretty stoked for this movie. They have a new, like I said, a new cast. Um, I really like the first one. Like I said, this one should be good. The trailer was amazing, and he's like, "I need to speak to Caesar," and it's just them zooming out uh, from Caesar's face, and then all of a sudden he puts his uh, arm forward in attack mode, and the trailer ends, and I got the chills all the way up my spine and I'm so excited I love these I love the first one like I said uh, I hope they do a good job with it I hope they don't ruin it um, I just I, I just hope I hope it does well uh, I don't I believe it comes out later on this year around October I, I can't I don't remember exactly but I know it comes out um, in a few months or 
you know, later on in the year. So, but yeah, Caesar looks cool. As you can see, there's more uh, apes behind him, following behind Caesar, similar to the story of Julius Caesar, um, way, way back when, obviously. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked for this movie. Moving on to honorable mention number three, right before we crack my top five, is Transformers 4. Where is where and what is Transformers 4 Age of Extinction? So yes, that is a title, Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. And all I know about this movie is that they are focusing on Dinobots. Um, I know that Mark Wahlberg is the main character, and Optimus Prime is supposed to look cool. That is all I know. And that has a June 27th, 2014 release date. That is all I know about this movie. I do not know anything about it, and I'm so happy because, I, like I said, I hate movies that spoil things. Um, but Transformers, I love the series. I love what Michael Bay has done. Uh, I don't know why people complain that it's such an awful series uh, because Shia LaBeouf did an amazing job in all three of the Transformers. The first one is still my favorite one, but um, Optimus Prime, looked, everything was cool. Everything was shot very well. Uh, Megan Fox did great in the first two films. And then they brought in that other girl. I can't put her in my... I don't, I don't remember her name. But uh, I like these movies a lot. And a lot better than most other people. And I don't know why people hate these movies. Uh, if you could tell me in the comments below, that'd be great. Because I'll hear the same excuse every time. There's too many explosions, dude. Like, it gets old. Well, let me ask you this. What happens... Well, what would happen? Let's say you were standing in like Chicago or New York, and what would you think would happen? What do you think would happen if two extremely large robots started fighting each other and crashing into buildings? What do you think would happen? It'd just be like a foam pit. Is every building a foam pit to robot now? Robots now in movies? Um, no, because it was perfect. Every movie was great. Obviously, the second one wasn't the best one. I'm pretty sure most of you could agree. But I just hear the same excuse. Oh, there's too many explosions and they wreck the city. It's just stupid. I, I don't get it. I don't get the story. You're stupid then. I, I mean, I'll, I'll rightfully admit, you're just stupid for thinking that because these movies are amazing. The, and I don't. And it's just that same stupid excuse every time. I'm stoked out of my mind for this movie. I don't know why I'm saying stoked so much. I'm very excited for this movie. Um, it comes out right around my birthday. I'm going to go see it. Of course, but probably a midnight release um, showing or whatever. But I'm really excited. I don't know a lot about it. I know the Dinobots are supposed to be in it. I know, which may sound a little cheesy at first, but they're supposed to look really cool. But, you know, they say that about a lot of films. And this little poster right here, I'm sure it's not the official poster, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, and you've got the little dinosaur bones in the background. So this it looks awesome. It looks really badass. Optimus Prime is in it. No more Shia LaBeouf. No Megan Fox. No other girl from the third one. And Mark Wahlberg's in it. Mark Wahlberg is now officially my favorite actor after uh, his performance in Lone Survivor. Um, if you guys have not seen my review on that, go on and head over to my channel and check that out. Uh, but I'm so excited for this movie. I love the Transformers films. Sadly, there's no Bumblebee in the movie. At least I don't think. I don't even know. See, I don't even know if Bumblebee is in the movie, uh, everyone's favorite character. But we'll see. Uh, June is uh, six months away. Six months, I believe, from today, actually, actually tomorrow. So six months from tomorrow, we will see what Transformers 4 Age of Extinction is all about. Moving on to number five, a movie that is not talked about and we really don't know much about besides the synopsis and who's in it is Interstellar. Um, Christopher Nolan is directing, which should, it should already be a great movie. We already know that much. Uh, Christopher Nolan is an amazing director. Um, he directed Memento, which is a great movie. He's directed Inception, which I have not seen. I have not gotten the time to watch Inception by myself to focus on the movie. Um, but he's always had picked out a great cast. He, uh, as you can see, you've got Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, I believe, Jennifer Chastain, you've got, and Michael Caine, and someone else. I, I can't see the names up there. But what I know about this movie is that it's about time travel and wormholes in space and traveling through them so i'm sure this movie is going to be confusing and we're going to be out of our minds by the end of the movie like what did we just watch is it because i've seen the trailer for inception and that already looked crazy enough but 
I mean, he's always picked out a great cast. Even in the Dark Knight trilogy, Michael Caine was great as Alfred. Anne Hathaway was amazing as Selena Kyle. And I'm really excited for this movie. Not a lot of buzz is going on about it. Not a lot of people know what it is. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, Christopher Nolan looks like he did the same type of word formatting with Interstellar compared to Inception. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. You guys should be excited, too. If you don't know much about the movie, go ahead and look up on it. Um, Google, Wikipedia, whatever. Uh, but I'm so excited. I I'm so excited. I love time travel movies uh, similar to Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko is not exactly a time travel movie, but, yeah, in a way, I guess it is. But I love Donnie Darko. Time travel movies always mess with your mind, and I love that feeling. Christopher Nolan is probably the greatest director within the last 10 years. Um, I don't think you can argue with that. So, ever since 2004's Batman Begins and Memento, I believe, came out three years before that with um, Guy Pearce, uh, who played Aldrich Killian, Aldrich Killian in Iron Man 3. So, I'm excited. I'm excited and I'll keep saying it over and over. Uh, the whole space aspect is cool. Space is, you know, galaxies long, planets long, miles long, and... I, I think it's going to get crazy. I think it's about to go in. I hope it's a two-hour and a 45-minute loop movie. I love long films. I, I enjoy I enjoy sitting there. Uh, I actually just picked up the Lord of the Rings 15-disc set extended edition on Blu-ray last night and watched The Fellowship of the Ring, and that was three hours and 48 minutes. And, man, let me tell you, that was a trek. So I hope this movie is long enough to explain everything. I hope they don't leave any plot holes because... They kind of ruin everything, and it has to obviously deal with time travel, wormhole, space, time continuum, and rocket ships, and all that nonsense. Um, I'm def I'll probably go see this in the theaters uh, with a lot of people, or wait for it to come out on Blu-ray and pick that up and watch it. Um, I don't I don't think any of these uh, photos I'm showing you guys are the exact photos you will be seeing when the movie comes out. It could possibly quite be. Um, this, this photo right here looks pretty cool with the uh, eye-ish wormhole looking thing. So I'm excited. Matthew McConaughey is a great actor. Uh, Anne Hathaway is a great actor. Chelsea Chastain or Jessica Chastain is a great actor. And Michael Caine is also a great actor. So I'm really excited for this movie. Getting into my top four, we have at number four, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Now, I'm a big Superman fan. I'm Superman fan. I'm a big superhero fan. And I'm pretty excited for this movie. Not a lot of people really like the first Captain America. Not America, and I just recently rewatched it on Netflix a few days ago, and I liked it. I like the first Captain America. It's extremely underrated. Hugo Weaving did an amazing job as Red Skull. I believe Chris Evans is a great Captain America, although he was growing up for me the original and only Human Torch in the Fantastic Four. But Chris Evans does a great job as Captain America. You can't deny that. Uh, would you consider him the leader of Avengers? Yes, because it's America and because it's America. And the poster right here is really, really cool because it really shows a lot about what this movie is going to bring. Uh, the Winter Soldier. If you, well, I don't want to. I don't want to really do any spoilers in this movie. In this uh, uh, episode slash talk about my top five most anticipated movies. I don't really want to spoil anything, but. The enemy is pretty cool, the Winter Soldier, and it pretty much shows it's a dark, gritty time in the world. It's supposed to be uh, political. It's supposed to tap on politics a little bit, which could be controversial because politics in movies usually don't work out very well. But uh, I believe it's going to be great. The Winter Soldier uh, obviously looks like, you know, he got to a shield in the trailer. You see him catch his shield, and it kind of just shows it, you know, beaten up, like Captain America's beaten up and... I think this movie is going to be great. It comes out on April 4th, uh, 2014, as you can see on screen. I am, I th I'm really starting to get into Marvel a little bit more. I'm more of a DC type of guy. I think you know the heroes in DC are a little bit more intriguing and a little bit more dynamic, along with their villains, than uh, in the Marvel Universe. But this movie, Captain America, is basically, it is the third film, excuse me, in the Marvel Phase 2. And then the next one will be Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And I, th I, th I think this movie is going to set a different type of tone for superhero movies because now we see superhero movies getting into this more darker, gritty, realistic world. And we'll finally get to see Captain America 
not necessarily fight solo, but fight along uh, Falcon, as you can see on screen, and Black Widow in this film, along with Nick Fury every so often. And we'll finally get to see him, you know, travel a little bit outside New York a little bit more, you know, move around a little bit more. Because when they fought in New York uh, in Avengers, they pretty much stayed around the Avengers or Stark Tower and Times Square. And that, that was really all we, all we saw. And uh, well, I'm excited. I, we also saw the helicarrier crash down into the water. It's supposed to be a darker, grittier tone. I'm glad they're doing that. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love the realistic take that they're taking on superhero films nowadays. I loved it in Man of Steel. That's why Man of Steel was my favorite movie of last year. Um, Dark Knight trilogy really set the tone for that with Christopher Nolan, and that's why Christopher Nolan is such a great director. He really set the tone for these future superhero movies, and to see Captain America in this photo right here fighting Winter Soldier, I can already tell this movie is going to be insane because the Winter Soldier is a match for Captain America. Uh, because I know a little bit about the Winter Soldier, I don't want to spoil anything for you guys, but he's a pretty good match for him. Uh, he was captured by the Russians and turned into a communist fighter to fight for Russia. And he's kind of superhuman, just like Captain America. And it's going to be a good battle. Like I said earlier, you saw in the end of the trailer, he threw the shield at uh, the Winter Captain America threw the shield at uh, the Winter Soldier. And he caught it with that bionic arm right there. And that was just like, everyone was so wowed uh, when I showed everyone. So... I don't know, I'm really excited for this movie. I'm really excited for Marvel this year, uh, especially with Spider-Man, X-Men Days of Future Past, and Guardians of the Galaxy, and Captain America Winter Soldier. Moving on to number three. Of course, I have this. Ha I have to have this movie in here. It is The Hobbit, there and back again. Almost a desolation of Smaug. But uh, there and back again, it should be amazing. Uh, I'm definitely, definitely not doubting that this movie is going to suck. Will it win 11 Academy Awards like the third Lord of the Rings film did, Return of the King? Will that win? Will this movie win 11 Academy Awards? No. Should it be nominated? Maybe. Um, we'll see how it goes. The second Hobbit was amazing. I loved it. It was definitely better than the first one. An unexpected, an unexpected jersey, jersey, an unexpected journey was great. I liked that movie a lot. Um, but definitely, the smile was better. But there and back again should be great. All these photo, these two photos I'm showing you have, are ab, I mean, are obviously not the real photos because Peter Jackson likes to keep things pretty quiet until around Comic Con later on, start releasing a few more, few more things. But uh, Martin Freeman is obviously coming back as a uh, Bilbo Baggins, uh, Ian McKellen as Gandalf, and this is pretty, in my opinion, this is going to be. The last Middle Earth film, or film based on Middle Earth, we'll see for a very long time. And that's pretty upsetting because, or we might get one in 2023. Uh, but all the Lord of the Rings were great. I loved every single one of the Lord of the Rings. The Hobbits are great so far. And this one shouldn't disappoint. The ending of The Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug, was amazing. I love the ending to that movie. Uh, it definitely kept me on the edge of my seat and made me want more but the movie had ended uh benedict cumberpatch did amazing as smaug and they're back there and back again should just pretty much focus on uh i forget the town's name them fighting smaug and uh the elves fighting the orcs and gandalf you know finally once sal because sauron is in the second one the all-seeing eye and he made, he made his appearance in that, and uh, Gandalf is. We're gonna see what Gandalf's up to. We don't really know what he's up to, uh, and the White Orc. And I'm sure this movie's about to go in. There's gonna be a lot of action, and there's gonna be a lot of you know drama. And all the actors that play the dwarves are fantastic. And the only problem I have with these Hobbit films is the fact that they don't use real makeup. They kind of CGI a little bit more of everything, uh, and it kind of takes away that realistic tone like the Lord of the Rings had. Um, but I'm really excited for this movie. I'll definitely be going to see it in theaters later on this year. I believe December 18th or just right around there. And yeah, I'm super stoked for this movie. I hope you guys are too. Moving on to number two, probably the most untalked about film of the year because no one knows what it is. 
and I hope we get a trailer on Super Bowl Sunday. There's another Marvel film that is Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy is different, and it's supposed to be, for those that don't know, it's these five heroes who, um, five unlikely heroes who come together and fight throughout space. They're Guardians of the Galaxy, obviously, as you can see in uh, on the screen, but here's what the team consists of and it's and it's pretty cool and I really like the concept of it I never got into the Marvel comic books and I really want to because it sounds so intriguing I didn't know anything about the Guardians of the Galaxy until towards the end of last year and I was like who are the Guardians of the Galaxy so I kind of searched up a little bit out on it and about the movie and here's what it consists of it consists of Gamora the last of her kind she's this who is the stepdaughter of Thanos the enemy that you saw at the end of the Avengers film, the purple guy, uh, who some people won't know what I'm talking about. He's the purple guy. And she was raised by Thanos, and she's considered the most violent or the most amazing women in the Marvel Universe. So this is the last of her, okay? And then you have Chris Pratt, who's an up-and-coming, you know, well-known actor. He's playing the voice in the Lego movie that comes out within a few weeks. And he plays Star-Lord. Uh, or Peter Quill. Peter Quill, who eventually becomes Star-Lord, and he is a leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy. He leads them throughout the galaxy and uh, to fight, you know, galaxy crimes and stuff and move from planet to planet. So it's similar to Star Wars, uh, if, you're getting, you want, if I want to give you the idea. It's similar to Star Wars in its own way, uh, with flying and stuff. And then you have Rocket Raccoon, and you may be laughing, Rocket Raccoon, oh no. But uh, Rocket Raccoon is this little raccoon. He's got an accent, I believe a Bostonian, English, or New York accent. I don't know which one they're going to go with in the film. He is a voice acted by Bradley Cooper, who is an awesome choice. And uh, he's, he's going to be an awesome character. He's a rocket. Well, he's a raccoon, and he likes to shoot guns, and he's very violent. And then you have Drax on the left there, who is Drax the Destroyer. And uh, he should be awesome. He's played by David Batista, And... Uh, Photos of him look really cool. And then in the background, as you can see, it's a ginormous tree, and his name is Groot. And he only speaks three words. I am Groot. And that is it. But he says it in different tones and how he feels. And that his he is voice actor by Vin Diesel. So that's pretty much the general idea of this film. And as you can see on screen, this is pretty much the team up and what they'll look like. Star-Lord Peter Quill will look like that, the guy in the middle right there with the two guns. Drax is to your left, Groot is in the background, Gamora to your right, and Rocket Raccoon to Star-Lord's right. I'm super excited for this movie. I really cannot wait for it. It comes out August 1st later this year, and I hope to God we get a super I hope to God we get a trailer on Super Bowl Sunday. That would be the best time to do it. This is the only uh factual photo we've seen. This is the only one that Marvel has released that has been official. That and the two other ones that I showed you and I'm so excited for this movie. I hope we get a trailer on Super Bowl Sunday. That would be the best place to market it. Millions and millions of people watch the Super Bowl. And just to show these guys, the people would be like, what the heck? You know, you'll, they'll see a raccoon and then they'll immediately call it off. Uh, but if we don't get a trailer, then I'll be very disappointed because I will be watching the Super Bowl, of course. I'm a big football fan. And uh, if we don't get a trailer, then we'll probably get one at Comic-Con. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm super excited for this movie. You guys should read too. It's like Star Wars in space with, with superheroes pretty much. So tell me what you guys think about Guardians of the Galaxy. Is it a good team up of these five unlikely characters to come together and take down the villain Ronan the Accuser? Moving on to my number one, yes, the most underrated superhero of all time, Spider-Man. The amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, I am beyond excited for this movie you have no idea how i'm how excited i am for this movie and i'll probably keep saying excited over and over again because i'm that excited i believe i've said it four times already but a lot of people think this movie's gonna suck and i thought the trailer was awful because there's too much cgi keep in mind when people do trailers there is a lot of cgi because they're not done with the trailer yet uh but when the movie comes out it's gonna look even better uh, I think his suit looks awesome. It looks perfect with the white eyes. and I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, he has three villains in this film. 
And a lot of people think this movie's going to be bad because the people that think that thought the first Amazing Spider-Man was bad. The first Amazing Spider-Man, in my opinion, was better than the first three original Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans. This Spider-Man is more realistic, it's more comic book-like, because he makes the web shooters. And ah, I'm just so excited, you guys. I mean, I'm so, so, so pumped. It comes out May 2nd, 2014. I'm already going to the midnight showing uh, for sure. I'm going to be getting there early. I'm going to be sitting in line probably for six hours. I'm going to I'm gonna make sure I'm there first. I'm so excited for this movie. Um, and another reason I, didn't get, I want to point to real quick before I get towards the end of this video is a lot of people think this movie is going to be bad because it's three villains. Because Spider-Man 3 was awful because they had three villains. But the only reason Spider-Man 3 was bad with three villains was because the script was poor and they didn't... They, Venom was only in the movie the last 20 minutes. Sandman was basically the main villain. And the Hobgoblin wasn't really like a villain villain. You just saw him for a total of 10 to 15 minutes. So they did a really poor job of that. Now here's Amazing Spider-Man 2. I can already tell you how Amazing Spider-Man 2 is going to go. I, I could tell you the ending, but I'm not going to. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, but I can guarantee... I can guarantee Rhino is a smaller character. Rhino will show up within the first 10 minutes of the film. Spider-Man will fight him. And that's how things will go. Because they're going to focus on characters at different times. Electro is the main villain played by Jamie Foxx. Paul Giamatti plays Rhino. And I believe that is Dane DeHaan, Harry Osborn, as Green Goblin right there. Or it might be uh, Norman Osborn. I forgot the actor who played him. Now... The reason I think Rhino is going to show up is because he plays the smallest character, and they've already uh, they've already uh, admitted that Marvel and uh, Mark Webb himself they've already said that Rhino is going to be a smaller character. So here's what I think: I think Spider-Man's flying, um, flying, swinging around the city. He hears police sirens, and it's Rhino uh, or Paul Giamatti in a truck, um, you know, driving around and then crashing in the cars and stuff. And then he puts on the Rhino mech suit and he, they fight, and that's. And that's what I think is going to happen, unless Spider-Man captures him at first in the movie at the beginning, and then he breaks out later and gets into the mech suit. We'll see, but I guarantee we'll see Rhino a very little time, but there'll definitely be a fight sequence between Spider-Man and him. Uh, Electro will be the main villain. He looked freaking awesome in the trailer, you know, just teleporting with his electricity from elect uh, at the uh, grid, at the electrical grid, and... Uh, the Goblin looks awesome. I'm super excited. Andrew Garfield is definitely a better Spider-Man than Tobey Maguire. He's much more lanky. He's you know much more com he's more comical, and uh, I'm so excited for this film. I this is such an underrated hero. He's my second favorite superhero of all time, uh, if not my first. It's debatable for me, but I think it's gonna be an excellent film. I'm super excited for this movie. I'll definitely be going at midnight, like I've stated before, and. Uh, yeah, these are my top five most anticipated films of 2014. Let me just give you guys a rundown of the list before, or the list. My honorable mentions were X-Men Days of Future Past, Godzilla, Transformers 4, Age of Extinction, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, number five, Interstellar, number four, Captain America Winter Soldier, number three, Hobbit, There and Back Again, Number two, Guardians of the Galaxy. And number one, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Hope you guys enjoyed my list. What are your top five movies of 2014? Tell me down in the comments below. Also, go ahead and check out my Lone Survivor review on my channel. And go check out my top five movies of 2013. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, hit that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Or hit that dislike button if you completely hated it which you really shouldn't though because I had a great time doing this video for you guys. I hope you guys stayed here for the whole half hour it's about to be. I enjoy making this, making these uh, videos. I enjoy talking about movies. Movies are so fun and uh, so exciting. They really put me in a different world and different aspect on how to look at things. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that like button. Comment your top five most anticipated movies of 2014. Go ahead and check out my channel. And if you want to keep up with everything movie, football, and video game news, Go ahead and hit that handy dandy subscribe button. This is Roman once again. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day.